When you look at alumni from Berkeley, many of them have done amazing things to help move our, our society and our world forward. But John really, I think, stands out as, as somebody who was able to move a, a scientific field forward in a very warm and, and, and uh, gracious way. And, and I think that's something that uh, the field needs, you know, and that the world needs. That's the sort of uh, person that I, that I think really represents Berkeley at its best. What John Mather and 10,000 other people have done, but John Mather is the chief scientist, is that they have done what Galileo did. They opened up the universe for all of us to see. Where we lived was naturally dark sky country. My parents had the little golden book guides to constellations. We would go out and we would look at the sky and there was the Milky Way. I think if John had grown up someplace else, he might very well have gotten a Nobel Prize, but it might not have been for astrophysics. If you wanted a recipe for a brilliant astrophysicist, you would have the gifts that John was born with. You would have two parents who were natural educators who completely supported our curiosity and our learning. When he was seven and I was five, he was given an erector set for Christmas. And I have a vivid memory of my grandmother and my parents beginning to talk about Princeton and MIT because of what he did with the erector set. So yes, there was a sense of his promise. It was at the Berkeley Physics Department picnic in Tilton Park. Uh, I was standing in a group of people and John Mather was there and I didn't know him and he needed to find a place to live. So I said, why don't you stop by the house on Walnut Street where I live? And he said, okay, and he did. And he then decided to move in. And that was a pivotal event in the history of that house kind of a semi-communal house in Berkeley. We had house meetings to resolve differences and there was built-in friendships. People were in the house, in Walnut House, they would go to John Mather with, say, problems. And they're not scientific problems. They could be problems with a, with a girlfriend or problems with a, a, a boyfriend. And John Mather always had good advice because he was a very stabilizing influence. He's exactly the kind of person you want to be a chief scientific officer. He's a straight arrow decent person, intelligent, and he's also talented. We had an old piano in the house and he would play Scott Joplin on that piano. <laughs> Very lively. To me, John always seemed like one of the more reasoned, thoughtful scientists um, who would be looking ahead at what needed to be done, but with very calm, um, warm, warm demeanor in, in how he did it. John is incredibly smart. He's incredibly gracious. John has done so much for science, yet he's remarkably humble in person. He's affable. He's always willing to talk to people, no matter how senior or junior you are. Because of his inclusive approach, he really wants to make what he understands accessible to other people. I think at one point an article in the Swarthmore Alumni Magazine referred to him as the Fred Rogers of astrophysics. I was actually able to meet with Dr. Mather a couple of times. I, I had this idea that I wasn't sure if it even made sense. And he not only kind of validated myself and saying, yeah, you can do that. He even told me about current engineers and scientists at NASA that were actually looking at this problem. And he actually encouraged me to pursue that. JDUST is a remarkably complicated scientific endeavor. So many things had to go precisely right in order for the telescope to get to the correct location, to unfold, to start collecting data and expand our view of the universe. John was really key. I have my doubts whether this program would have gotten off the ground if it wasn't someone of John's caliber. 
these major projects that John's been so instrumental in bringing forward from the early CMB work to the recent James Webb Space Telescope are really right in, at the heart of the kinds of things that Berkeley has been involved with in, in these fields. There's a lot of questions we have about the Galactic Center. James Webb is really helping us to better understand this really compact, complex region. I think it's so important in like the climate today to be able to get people excited about science, um, and Webb is a great instrument for that. Congratulations, John, on, on this Alumnus of the Year Award. Um, and I, uh, I look forward to many more years of, of being inspired by your work. JWST has been a tremendous success. A lot of the credit goes to you, and I know you've taken joy in that. Ob obviously, congratulations, because this is, it, it's an honor from Berkeley with so many graduates to be an Alumnus of the Year. This is truly an honor. You're an absolutely fantastic scientist, and Berkeley is so lucky to have you in our orbit. Thank you for all your support. I now have an idea of what I want to do at NASA, and because of this scholarship, I've actually been accepted into the PhD program, and I know I'll be continuing as a graduate Pathways intern at NASA Goddard. As a personal thank you for paving the way for new and young astronomers to explore questions of the universe and cosmology and where we come from. <laughs> I'm laughing because I have been congratulated him over such a plethora of honors over the year, years. Um, so congratulations, John, on <laughs> Adding another notch on your belt. <laughs> no, congratulations, John, on um, being alum of the year for Berkeley. Very well deserved. Mm -hmm.